was a great love of God. Their, their love that has no comparison. The love that exceeds all things. And it's the cause of our lives to be here tonight. It's a love that gives the desire to, for eternity. It's the love of the Father for you and I. We don't deserve it as men. But the Lord loved us first. And our joy is to be here. To be here tonight. And feel this peace and this joy. And to be able to open up our lips. And exalt the Lord. You came here for this reason. You are an adorer. Our objective is to praise the name of the Lord. Exalt His name. The King of the Universe. He's not just anybody. He is the King of the Universe. That one day looked upon our lives with this look of mercy. He didn't see your mistake or my mistake, but he saw our need. He saved us from the world of darkness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, to Jesus. Let's have a word of glorification in the name of the Lord. Lord, we praise your name at this moment because you have spoken to our hearts. We praise because you, we have heard the voice of our good shepherd. You give, has given us the direction that leads towards eternity. You has not left us alone, has guided us. Yeah, you have given your hand, blessing us. We think because you are in front of this God, we want to declare our great love to you. You are this wonderful God, has taken care, has taken care of us. We praise you because tonight we can contemplate the presence of the angels around us. We know that you are making yourself present here, and we praise you for everything that you ought to do still tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. I greet the beloved church and those that visit us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I would like just to open the Bible and the Gospel according to John. John chapter 14, verse, first verse, first and second verse and of uh, John. John 14. Verse 1 and 2. First and second verses. And the second. First and second verses. John chapter 14. Gospel of John. Glory to God. I'd like to ask the church to read with me together those two chapters, the two verses. Verse 1 says the following, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Go, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. May God bless us through his wonderful and powerful word. The church may be seated. My brethren, how wonderful it is to enter to into the church, in a, in a, into a service, and uh, worship. If if I were to leave right now, I would have uh, I, I would tell God that I would have received the the blessing that I that was seeking uh, through the worship. I always say uh, uh, regarding the worship, as we express the worship, the worship which is this kingdom of God, we understand the expression of a redeemed soul. Always remember this. And worship for us is an expression of the, a redeemed soul. Redeemed on the blood of a lamb, of a man. I came to this earth. He turned to man to die for us. This great love. It's wonderful because God he fills our soul with joy. He fills your, our hearts with peace. That's the moment in which we feel 
and we are reminded that of what God has prepared for us. The Lord has told to His servants and to His disciples the purpose of Jesus on this life, on His life, was to come so that we could go up. If He didn't come down, we would not be able to go up. But He left the splendor of His glory and He died in your and my place. He came. And the disciples were all worried in the difficult moment, knowing of his departure and his crucifixion. He calms down the hearts of the disciples. And he tells them, Let not your heart be troubled. Don't be desperate. I'm going to the Father. Believe in, in the Father and also believe in me. He took men that were needed, men that many times society didn't give any worth. Man didn't know what he cared about and transformed this man to disciples to carry his word. Man that many times beside him they didn't understand, but he worked in each one of those men. And the love of them for Jesus was so great that they didn't want him, Jesus to leave. Them. They were saying, no, if you, wherever you go, I'll go. I'll give myself for you. Don't worry. Don't trouble your heart. Believe only. Believe in God. It's interesting that the word, when he said, it's very clear. You know why? What is the sinner needs? The sinner be needs to believe in the Jesus that came, died, raised from the dead, and now is uh, on the right side of the Father, and he shed his blood for the love for love of our our life. And not because of your sin, but because you were a sinner. You transformed, you washed your soul. This, it is simply what God wants. Man that doesn't have an experience with Him. And His promise was in the, the house of my Father, there are many mansions. And this mansion uh, that we have here made out of uh, bricks, this church that we have here made out of bricks. It's such a nice place. We come here and we feel His true presence. Now try to imagine eternity. It will be forever. It will be forever. The praises, the gratitude. We will be face to face. How wonderful it is to imagine eternity. How wonderful it is to feel this peace of eternity because our names have been written in the Book of Life. One day we were not, we didn't know where we were going, and He brought us to His presence. He gave us this word to bring joy to our soul, to remove us from darkness. Do not be troubled. If you came here tonight, it's interesting that as we received the spiritual gift, there was a youth that didn't feel loved, and this is what the world's been going through these last days. She was living a moment of lack of gratitude. She was despised. She felt she was despised. The Lord has shown that this young woman, she didn't even feel like she had any worth. But I'm telling you, every youth and everyone that is here, you have a worth to God. The Bible says that there is a celebration in heaven for each sinner that repents. And you, youth, you have great worth to God. A word that is cannot me be measured because he loves your life. And Lord has shown that tonight, as we were singing the praises, the Holy Spirit was speaking to her heart. You are beloved, of, beloved of the Lord. You give your heart to. Don't let your youth be uh, trouble you. Don't let the situation that you will be living in. Many times inside of your home, preoccupation with the future, with the school, or having some purpose in life, to be able to achieve goals. Don't let this to take away from you. Don't let it trouble your heart. Believe in God. And live in God. We're not here proclaiming religion because religion cannot give you anything. Don't give your soul to religion but give it to Jesus. 
give your soul to Jesus because He, you, He has loved you. He will sustain you. He will, he will put you standing up again. You give you strength. You give. You make you strong. That's why we exalt this powerful God. That's why when come here and open up our lips and uh, open up this singer, we have this peace because He He inhabits in on the worship and feel His true presence. That's why our, our, our lips open up and, and we are filled with joy and peace and fellowship. And this is the moment of our life in which we desire in eternity forever. We have troubles in our lives, we have our work and our daily lives, but we know that our destiny is eternity that awaits us. The children know this, the, the adolescents know, the youth also knows. We desire this day. The disciples were, they didn't even know what to do. They were worried. They were saying, Jesus, are you, you leaving? And he said, and the, father, and the house of my father, there are many mansions. If you want, want to be a citizen of heaven, if you want to be a part, if you want to have this uh, mansion, that's because here, my brethren, I uh, want to tell you that this, this place will pass. Everything here will pass. But the word of the Lord, it will remain forever. Because what God has prepared for us is what the eye has not seen and it has not come to man's heart and not in the ear has not heard. And for those who love, who love Him. And the Spirit He reveals to us tonight, He reveals to me, to you. You brother, understand how the Spirit operates among us in every service, every moment, every instant in which we come up to His house. God operates in, 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 in many ways because uh, God has taken care of His people, has not let us down. That's why you, th you are, you, you, you cannot have this feeling that you are not loved because God loves you. The church is here to give you this warmth and this love. This body that speaks of the body of Jesus, that's why he was concerned to say, I'm going to prepare. In the house of my father, there are many mansions. And also, there is also dwelling for those that has not accepted Jesus as his savior yet. Tonight is a special night. We speak to you that has not have not accepted Jesus yet. Accept Him as your Savior. Speak to Him in your heart. Say, Jesus, I accept you. Teach me how to walk. Confess your sins. Because this dwelling that is on eternity is preparing for those that love Him. To those that walk on His path. The word of the Lord says that He came to save the world. He came here for the ones that were his, but the ones that were his rejected him. But the word tells that those that accepted him gave them the power to be called children of God. And we have this privilege of being called children of God. It is a love. It is not a, a love made of words, it was, but it was a great gesture in the cross. It was his life. To see my brethren, Jesus, the greatest teaching that we have, I always say, the word of the Lord, it's a wonderful word. It's not rules of faith in practice, the Bible. Jesus gave, Jesus gave the greatest example of love and forgiveness when he was at the cross uh, to the point of death. Many there were still criticizing, mocking him. Everybody wanted his death, even some who were close, close to him. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they do. So there is no greater love. This is the love that is given to you and I. God brought you here not to point out your, your mistakes, but he brought you here to show you your needs. That's why when we have gifts, when we see the spiritual gifts, like this youth and and also about another woman that the Lord has shown and God even has shown your age. I don't know you. I don't even know who you are. But God knows because He's uh, all-knowing, is almighty and uh, omnipresent. God
God has no limitations on this earth. And, and the gift that the Lord has given was that there was another woman that came here. She was about 53 years of age. She has gone through difficult moments. And the struggle is, it never stops. And she feels like in a valley of the shadow of death. And she has only found thorns on her way. That's how you feel tonight. The Lord has shown, and I believe that the Lord is speaking to you. The Lord is speaking to your heart. And the Lord has shown that this woman has been taken to uh, a fountain of water. He is the, the fountain of water. He is the fountain of life. In your light, I uh, will see light. Jesus is the, the fountain of water, so you can dive in. And you need to seek and you can quench your thirst. And the service for you, my beloved, my beloved sister. The Lord has shown that you was the comfort for your soul. A brother, the Lord is the one that every instant surprises with the Holy Spirit. In the morning, I'm going to tell. I'm going to. I'm not going to let you tell Marcus. Received a great experience. I would. I told Marcus already. It's wonderful when we hear this. A pastor from Brazil. From Valadares in Brazil, he said, "I was watching the service in the morning, and I glorified the Lord when I heard that message. It was not because who was here had something, but was because the Spirit of the Lord guided us. Remember this: we are vessels, but the owner is uh, as God's. And I was praying for this church. I was praying for, for us, for us here, for here in Florida." He, the Holy Spirit touched his heart. The salvation of uh, salvation of uh, the Brazil of this earth, of this country. But he he was asking the Lord, Has you, "Have you only done it for the Brazilians?" Then he heard the word, "We have to be multipliers, evangelists, and then what?" And he said, I glorify the Lord. Because my prayer was heard. Because desire the Lord. God has no barriers. Language, nations, races. None of it interrupts. You are the vessel. God wants to use my beloved. God wants to use. And I said many times, God didn't bring you here by chance, not not only for you to become a citizen of this nation, but a citizen of heaven, and to carry His word to others, to others, to this world that has millions of people from all over the world to carry His word. You know why? Because in the house of my Father there are many mansions. There are many mansions, and God wants to place them in those mansions. And you are this vessel. You have been chosen. You have been chosen for this evangelization, for this word. You who are here tonight, you are also part of this church. And you, if you are not part of it, you have now this opportunity to be in the house of the Father. Don't trouble your heart. Don't desperate. Allow the Lord to operate in your life. You just have to believe. If you believe, you see the glory of God. It is very simple. If you believe, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we sing a song? The group will sing a song. The praise group will sing a song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Holy is our name, Lord. We're trusting the Lord. My faith is in a God that tells us, don't trouble your heart. You believe in God. Believe also in me. You just have to believe. In your life, we'll have a new dynamic, a new path that will lead us to eternity. We are coming to a close. If you came tonight and you understood that the Lord spoke to your heart through the praises, the message, and the spiritual or the spiritual gifts, if you desire prayer, we are going to be here at your disposal after the finish of the service to pray for you. So now let us close our eyes and give this service to the Lord. Lord, Eternal Father, we praise you because we trust in you. Your grace that never shakes. You are the rock to which you are, we are firmly connected to. We love you because you love a uh, God that has zeal for his people. We thank you for your peace, for the joy of your salvation. We praise you for this genuine uh, work that you has per have performed among us. We thank you for the eternity that awaits us. We ask you tonight that you receive our worship, our adoration, our thankfulness. Give a, a beginning of week in your presence, filled with blessings and peace in your presence. We adore you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. If you desire a prayer, we are here at your disposal. I just want to remind you this month is a prayer for the ministries to pray for the ones that need it the most. Any other announcement? The peace. I want to say the peace of the Lord. I want to thank you also, the brethren that visit us. I would like to invite you to be with us, with, be with us more times. So Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. I want to remind you that uh, the service during the week is 8 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday it's 7.30. Peace of the Lord.